hey guys, my name is Omar Sevilla from San Diego Miramar College. I've been teaching here since 2005. Today we're going to take a look at these cylinder heads, do an inspection, measure them for flatness, and I'm going to point out some other things we should be looking for when we're inspecting cylinder heads. When we're working on a cylinder head, it's a good idea to have some cylinder head stands. These cylinder head stands, it's pretty much a platform with a spike. Uh, you can put those spikes into the cylinder head bolt holes and that's going to hold the cylinder head for you nice and sturdy on the bench there. Looking at this cylinder head, this is a big block cast iron cylinder head. This cylinder head probably weighs 70 to 80 pounds. It wasn't very easy getting it up there, but I wanted to show you the cylinder head because the valves were out of it already. We can look at a couple of things while we have this off. The first thing we want to look at is we want to look at the cylinder head surface. We want to make sure there's no big scratches, gouges, anything like that. And if we look closely, you can see there's still a little gasket material left on the cylinder head. There's some here, there's some down at the uh, cylinder on the end, there's a little there. And so before we start measuring these cylinder heads for flatness, we can use a gasket scraper. There's a couple styles. I prefer this style here, it's got a hardened blade and you gotta make sure it's nice and sharp. And then you just kind of get in there and you're gonna scrape that gasket material off. And there it is there, that'll interfere with your measurement get the rest of that gasket material off so that when I measure the cylinder head for flatness, I'm not getting any interference from leftover material that shouldn't be there. One of the other things about checking the cylinder head surface is the RMS finish. And that is a unit of measure for smoothness. These cylinder heads should be really smooth. The tool we're gonna to use to check the cylinder head for flatness is called a straight edge. This straight edge, it's a bar of steel and it's cut perfectly flat all the way down. So the manufacturer is gonna have you measure the cylinder head in a couple of locations in a couple of different angles. So we take our straight edge and we set this down on the cylinder head. I like to set it straight across the bolt holes and we're gonna do a couple of positions here. We use this tool called the feeler gauge and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my two thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. That's two thousandths of an inch. That is the specification for many manufacturers. So if this cylinder head is warped, uh, by two thousandths of an inch or more, it's gonna need to be replaced. I take my filler gauge, I go down the length of the straight edge, and if that blade slides through, that means that the location where it slides through is deformed on the cylinder head. So I'm gonna go across the middle of the combustion chambers, and then I can check each location again. So see here, it kinda slides through a little, just a little bit. So we got a little bit of warpage there, not too much, but there, it slides all the way through. So right now, I know this location is at least two thousandths of an inch so one of the things I wanna do before I get too far ahead of myself is make sure that there's not gasket material that's causing that to be a poor reading. And if I look closely, I found some gasket material. So let me scrape that off. So now I'll take my filler gauge again, check it. Look at that, nice and tight. So even a small little piece of gasket there can cause you a false reading. We would have had to send the cylinder head to the machine shop and um, we would have had to pay for them to surface the cylinder head for no reason. Now the next step here is I need to check the cylinder head flatness perpendicular to the last position I checked it. Okay, everything looks good there. And all this is doing is just verifying the cylinder head is perfectly flat. And then the last step, I would go corner to corner from the corner bolt hole to the corner bolt hole like an X pattern. This manual, is not for the head that I'm working on, but you can see the pattern here that Toyota recommends for their 2GR engine. So see, when I measure it this way, I actually show that it's warped. And that was two thousandths. I'm gonna jump up to four thousandths, and then I'm gonna get the actual measurement of how far this thing is warped here. So four thousandths does not fit, two thousandths does fit. So I'm gonna try three thousandths of an inch and then, then we'll know what our number is here. So there's three thousandths and three thousandths is snug there. So we're only warped about two thousandths of an inch. That might be completely acceptable for this uh, cylinder head according to the manufacturer specifications. So after checking the cylinder head flatness, we're gonna look at some other things. All right, next we're gonna continue inspecting our cylinder head. We're gonna be looking for, uh, for cracks and any other issues that could be going on while we're doing our inspection. These cylinder heads are under pressure, heat, expansion, contraction, 
thousands of times in their lifetime. And we wanna look and see if there's any cracks. And there's a few ways to do that. If we're dealing with a cast iron cylinder head, there's a process called Magnaflux, where we actually magnetize the cylinder head and we use a metal powder, and that metal powder will actually be attracted to the cracks. That is a tool pretty specific to machine shops, and they're not used as often in automotive repair facilities as they used to be 20, 25 years ago. If we have an aluminum cylinder head, we actually use a method. There's a dye and ultraviolet light involved where we stain the cylinder head with a fluorescent dye, and then we use a UV light and special glasses to identify cracks if there are any. In this case, as a technician, if I'm uh, disassembling and assembling a cylinder head, I can use my eyes to look for cracks. And there's a couple of key locations where we're gonna do that. The first one where I've seen most of the cracks in my experience is between the valves. In between the valves is a very narrow section in the combustion chamber. And sometimes you'll see a crack that just goes right across from the exhaust to the intake valve. This cylinder head doesn't have any cracks. One of the other locations, you wanna look at the water jacket. From the water jacket to the combustion chamber, see if there's any cracks on this surface here, because that's another location where the material is very thin. In some rare cases, if the cylinder head was not torqued down properly and it expands and contracts, and it bows so often, it could create a crack through the entire casting of the cylinder head. So to see that, sometimes you could see it from the top side of the cylinder head, sometimes you can see it from the surface side, but we definitely wanna make sure that we're, we are looking for cracks in those key locations. And one of the other things to look out for, especially on these older style cylinder heads, is the valve seats on many of these cylinder heads are pressed in. So this looks like it's all one part, but on some of these, especially in the exhaust, it's actually a separate piece of material and it's hardened and it's pressed into the cylinder head. So sometimes those seats come loose or they sink into the cylinder head and that's called a dropped seat. So those are things we're looking for when we're doing a visual inspection on a cylinder head. I'd love to demonstrate Magnaflux or die testing. We're not prepared to do that tonight, but make sure you're doing your visual inspections on your cylinder heads. Thanks guys. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching and please be sure to check out our social medias. Until next time.